Mobile Command Center like we do every Thursday morning. All right, Texas, in our quest to fulfill our goal this year, we're going to double the size of the GOP, number of people involved that have a title. We're going to do this by filling empty precinct chairs. We're going to do this by encouraging those newly minted precinct chairs and the ones that already have a, a, a precinct chair position to go ahead and appoint block captains, go ahead and hand out titles for precinct captains, whatever title you want. Form up these precincts. Form a group in your precincts of 20 or 50 or 100 voters. Have regular meetings. Have block walkings. Have, have, have meetings and speakers and everything you can do to get people involved. Let's get the number of people involved in these elections in these red counties so riled up. And we have such a great voter turnout that the Democrats don't even dare spend a dime. It would just be a waste of money in your district. This is how we keep red counties red, folks. If we sit on our laurels, it'll go the same way as Dallas County went. So along with that effort, we've got a volunteer in Rockwall County to help fill empty precinct chairs and find new uh, opponents for bad precinct chairs. And his name is Dennis London. You'll remember he... he he ran as a five-star candidate. He's running for state house, uh, House District 33. He has announced he's going to be running again. So whether you want to help with the effort to double the GOP or you want to help with his campaign, get with him. His opponent is a real estate developer who has put forward a lot of legislation on making his job easier as a real estate developer and making your job harder to keep your communities the way they want to be. Um, so thanks again. Hats off, Dennis London. He also has an article on our website about these uh, legislative things that were put forward by his opponent. The other counties on our list are Blanco, Borden, Bosque, and Bowie counties. Uh, big shout out up there to the Bowie County Patriots. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that they'll uh, participate in this uh, effort to double the GOP and make it look more like us. The other thing going on, we want to thank Julia Clark. She's the GOP chair for Medina County. They have just passed a censure against Congressman Tony Gonzalez, who is the only Republican who voted with the Democrats and against the Republican majority in Congress over and over and over again. Uh, hats off to that county for holding their elected representative uh, accountable, passing this censure. We want other counties to follow suit. If your elected officials from Congress to Senate to dog catcher, if they're Republicans and they're not doing what they're supposed to do as per the Republican Party platform, they have to be called out now. We have to encourage people to run in the primaries against them, or we have to encourage those people just not to run at all. And this has happened before. We have helped facilitate this over and over and over again. This is happening. This is up to your county. GOP, your local neighbors and your family, your friends, your customers, your bosses, whoever they happen to be, if those people are in your community, you can interact with them one-on-one, -on -one. and I very much encourage you to figure out who your precinct chair is and find out what they're doing to get rid of the rhinos, to thin the herd, and to send some support to the true patriots that we have serving in elected office in Austin and in, in Washington, D.C. There are good people in office. They're not all politicians lie. That is a lie from politicians who lie. And those same people will badmouth the decent Republicans that aren't playing the game. But you've got to pay attention to the words they use, okay? They will say he's not a good representative or he's not a good politician. You've got to ask them what good politician means to them. For the careerist, good politician means I won my last election, so that made me a better politician than the opponent. They're not saying they're the best choice for you or your family or your nation. They're just saying they won, which makes them a better politician in their eyes. You and I hear that term, and we think of someone who keeps their oath, keeps their word, represents their constituents. That is not the case. We're using the same words for totally different things. And this happens over and over again, and we sometimes lose track that people can mean different things when they even are using the same words that we're using. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we are making a difference in Texas over and over again. I see long-standing conservatives who might have rejected the five-star plan when it came out uh, almost two years ago. Uh, they're coming back around. They're saying, hey, I didn't want to believe you when you said X, Y, and Z about my state rep. 
or about my county chair or about my SREC member or about the Republican Party in general. And they're coming back and going, you're right. This particular group doesn't want to do anything except collect money and collect fame for their founder. But you're actually trying to do things. Uh, so now they're on board with the Five Star Plan. So we're going to ask everybody this week, if you're watching, try to contact five people. Interact with five people while you're standing in line or while you're at work or, or you know, at the grocery store. Find five people. Almost everybody is involved in politics today to some extent. They have an opinion. They have a, a, something that they're passionate about. Now, the other day, we were trying to list all the different issues in Texas, from property taxes, from, from the, the gender mutilation thing, from transgenderism, the school districts. I mean, it was just on and on and on. And it just seems endless. And it seems like it's just overwhelming. It's not, folks. All of these issues are caused by the same problem. When the power in your house goes out, you don't go out, buy a new TV, a new toaster, a new oven, go to the power and just stop working. All of us realize not all those things go bad at once. There's got to be something that's causing all of that. And whether it's in the central power grid in D.C. or it's the fuse box down in Austin, that determines on how we're going to fix it. Almost to a problem, everything we're experiencing is due to government policy. Career politicians have caused these issues. These things didn't pop up on their own, folks. They just didn't suddenly appear one day. Our government is not only not solving the problems that we have, they've created the problems we have. From inflation uh, to the school districts, whatever. We used to have, when, when Texas started out, we had our constitution written right after the Civil War. All schools in Texas were funded by the state and run by the state. They did such a crappy job that the only schools left that are actual state schools now are for the severely retarded or handicapped. There's not a choice. And higher education, which really overlaps with the whole severely retarded sometimes. But to, to, a, to a person, to a community, everybody in Texas disliked the state-run school system so much that they said, you know what, you can keep your money. We are going to create an ISD. That is an independent school district. We're not listening to Austin. We're not listening to you people. You don't live anywhere near us. You don't know what our kids, and you definitely don't care as much about our kids as we do. So we will raise our own property taxes. We'll pay our own teachers, our own administrators. We'll sit on the school board, run our own school. And you guys can stay in Austin and do whatever it is you do. Just stay out of our lives. Well, slowly over a period of years, Texas had all this school money that nobody wanted, and they started finding ways, creative ways, to give it back to the local independent school districts. But they came with strings here and strings there and strings here. Now we're back to a state-run school system. The only semblance of independent school district is on the side of the bus, ISD. That's on the side of every Texas bus, and it's a lie. The state now runs the school districts. And the feds have put their little finger in the pie, too, with your standardized testing and such. Now look, if Austin couldn't do it from that distance, D.C. definitely can't do it from that distance. So our money's being wasted with the Department of Education. It doesn't have a single teacher. Being wasted by the Department of Transportation doesn't have a single driver. These people need to go away. It's just a waste of money at the federal level. And, and our school systems need to go back to independent school systems. If you have to pull your kids out of school and send them to a private school, if you have to homeschool, the only solution to this is depopulate the government-run schools. They're no longer public school systems. They're government-run schools. They're indoctrination centers. These people that are so educated beyond their intelligence that they're harming these kids, and they think they're doing good, or they think they've got the moral high ground on this, you can't trust your kids to them, okay? And I don't know how long it's going to take to fix the school system, but your kids don't have that kind of time. Not a day, not a minute should go by where they're exposed to this stuff. And you ultimately have that power. There is nobody making you leave your kids where they're at. And I don't care if you teach kids as a, as a job. You can keep that job. You can't leave your kids in that system. That's just, I, I, I can't understand why anybody would do it. We didn't do it. And it wasn't nearly as bad when our kids were in school. Um, 
the long-term solution is to get good people in those school boards and to change those things. The long-term solution is to make sure that we elect the people and send them to Austin that will pull those strings, cut those strings to those ISDs. And the whole idea that the government can step in with the Robin Hood Act and steal money from rich districts and hand it to poor districts, well, at least they called it the Robin Hood Act and they admit they're stealing from the rich to gift to the poor. But it's still theft. It's not right, folks. The independent school districts, wherever that independent school district happens to be, sets their own tax rate. They shouldn't have to double or triple or quadruple their tax rate so that they can pay for a decent education for their kids plus the education for all the broke people around them that live in the poor neighborhoods. You live in a poor neighborhood, you live in a poor neighborhood. Okay, doesn't sound right, doesn't sound fair. Guess what? Life's not fair. That's the thing that drives me nuts when people start talking about that word. I was a very, very young child when my parents taught me that life wasn't fair. Embrace it, get used to it, it never changes. You want a better system? That's fine. School choice is the way to go for me. See, as long as it's written right, and as long as there can be no strings attached to that money. Now, I'm a veteran. I, if I chose to go to college, I could even go to seminary school with my, my, my government benefits. Okay? I don't choose to do that. But if I did, I could go to a religious school and there'd be no problems. The same system could be set up for these vouchers. The vouchers go to the taxpaying parent. Those vouchers get turned over to the, the private school or the religious school at the end of that semester. That way you don't have uh, schools sucking up all this money and then locking the doors the next day going, hey, we're bankrupt, we're out of business, and keeping all that cash and putting the taxpayer on the hook for, for the education for the rest of that semester. So that's, that's a good kind of safety guard with that system. The other safety guard is to say, if you don't want to participate in it, you don't have to take the money. So if they ever do add strings, People could just go, nope, keep your money and your strings. I would at least like to try the voucher system in Texas. I think competition is the way to go. And I think involving the private sector more would increase the quality and the quantity of education available to our children. We're spending eight or $9,000 per student for that kind of price. As a homeschooler, I could send my kids to France to learn French. So... Think about that. Make that a priority. Uh, also, in a year and a half, when we have our primaries and we have our elections and people are going, uh, there's a thing called precinct conventions, folks. A lot of people don't know about precinct conventions. But anybody that votes in an election, whether you vote as a Republican or vote as a Democrat, you can attend that party's precinct convention. And what that is, is just all the voters get together in a room in that voting district, in that uh, uh, voting precinct, and you come up with suggestions for your party. Maybe something like, uh, we don't want any back-to-back -back politicians. You can't hold office back-to-back -back in Texas. That was in the original Texas Constitution. You could put that forward as a resolution, as a Democrat or as a Republican, and if enough people in the party agree with you, that can be adopted as a platform and pushed as a priority. You could say, we want to get rid of retirement pay for the elected. Currently, our state uh, reps and our state senators get like, I don't know, it's a paycheck, like $600 a month. It's a joke, right? Why did anybody want to spend half a million dollars to, to get a job that pays $600 a month is beyond me. But you've got to realize that after eight years, they get like a six-figure income in retirement. Uh, I think at six years, they can retire at 60 and at eight years, they can retire at 50 and get $10,000 a month or more for the rest of their life. I don't know. If you can, if you've got this information, let me know. Tell me a part-time job that I can get. It's 180 days every other year where after eight years, I get $10,000 a month in retirement. The, most of the people that hold these positions have an income stream that they don't need to be there for. Real estate developers, uh, attorneys, doctors that have multiple uh, doctors in their practice. That's people that really don't need $10,000 a month in retirement extra on top of what they have. But they're not passing it up. And even when they get selected or elected to another office, a lot of times they'll hold on to that state office until the last possible day so they qualify for that retirement. They're not giving it up, folks. They care more about that retirement than they do about doing the job that they've been given. 
So keep an eye on that. Think about that. Write down your ideas for any laws that you'd like to see change. I, one I put forward didn't get any traction, but one I put forward is instead of challenging the taxing district when they when they say your house is worth a hundred thousand more than you think your house is worth, instead of a challenge process, why not just have a sale event? You think my hundred thousand dollar house is worth two hundred grand? Write me a check. Problem solved. If I'm wrong, you just made some money. If I'm right, I got this check, and I'll go buy another house somewhere else. I guarantee you this. The overvaluations would stop like that. I've talked to a county judge. He goes, oh, whoa, if you had that system in place, our county would go bankrupt. Well, nobody's going to sell you their $100,000 house for $100,000. They have to go through the hassle of moving. How many houses are you overvaluing? How many houses do you think that you've overvalued so much that the owners would go write me a check? Because if it's very many, if it's enough to cause your county to go bankrupt, you're doing a crappy job of evaluating houses. And this whole challenge system, I've seen it in practice. It's the same people sit on that challenge board year after year after year after year. And I see very few people winning when they go to their challenges. I, I, I've i actually been lied to that, oh, I've got to check this particular thing with Austin. We'll get back to you. But then a couple weeks later, I get this notice in the mail that says, you owe us this much. Oh, if you wanted to challenge that, you should have challenged it. Well, I did. You said you were going to check with Austin and get back to me. Oh, no, you had your chance. You lost. That is a rigged system, and, and it's not working. So that's why I put forward that. So if you'll keep sort of a notebook handy, when you hear good ideas, good laws, uh, changes that would uh, benefit the people of Texas, write those down. When you attend your precinct convention, you can put those forward to your political party and perhaps get them turned into law. That is probably your only chance to get these things put forward, folks. And even the political parties are having a tough time getting the legislative priorities put into law. And you as an individual citizen, that's really your only chance. So until next week, Robert West signing off.